beer's gone bad. When the beer flows like wine. We are your hosts tonight. I'm Patrick Tugin. I am Scott Benbook. We're getting back into why you're just jumping into it. Jumping Jump. right into it. I'm excited about this beer. This beer's taking us back to the San Luis days. Gus's. This is Old Rasputin. This is basically our gauge for dark beers. When we say, yeah, a 10, it's like Old Rasputin motor oil. Motor oil. Oh, it was a tough one to get out. It was a little hard. Yeah, it was, it's a tough word. Rasputin comes oh, from... He's that <clears throat> pick. What are we doing here? North Coast Brewing Company. This guy's going to come in at 9% ABV. It's going to put you back at about, what? what's the cost in that bottle there? The little guy is looking at 215. 215 for a little 12 ounce there. So Rasputin... Anybody who doesn't know, this was the beer that we drank in college that was like, holy balls, this thing has got a lot of alcohol in it. So, here we are, drinking it again. Right off the bat, let's jump into the aroma, the smell. As we what like this is, it. this is an imperial stout, a Russian imperial stout, mind you. Meant for its high alcohol content and thick, bold characteristics. And again, if you guys saw that we've done a, we did a, what, Woo! what Russian imperial did we do before? Uh, we did an imperial stout, and we did a double IPA, and we did uh, basically all the all the uh, all the the imperials and uh, doubles. The idea is that they're brewed twice for their long journey. Either a IPA is going from England to India around around Africa. Africa, thank you. Awesome. That little piece of land. Whatever that big continent yeah, is. Yeah, that one. And then this one, so they wouldn't freeze going from England to Russia Bazaar and Russia. That so, is true. Brewed for its high alcohol content. Brewed twice, right? They're not One being Bud Light, ten being Old Rasputin. This obviously is a Rasputin, so this comes in at a ten. And it is as dark and thick as you could imagine. I haven't had this since about 2005, only because this was straight out of Gus's in San Luis Obispo, and this was my college drink where it's like, wow, I'm going to get drunk, let me buy three of these and get at it. I'm on right with Pat there. I don't think I've had this since I've had a sandwich from Gus's. Dude, that has got... That's got coffee and chocolate ricks all in there. I think those Imperial Stouts just have a lot of uh, coffee chocolate notes to me anyways. Yeah. Let's throw us out there. Do you smell vanilla? I smell alcohol. <laughs> do you smell Seriously, it smells like rubbing alcohol a little bit. I kind of do actually get smell that. I'm telling you. This is a no-joke beer. Mm. You know, I'm gonna, let's, let's, let's jump into the taste here. What do you got, Pat? Oh my god, that is a, that is a bold in your face kind of beer, man. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus would like this beer. We drink a lot of dark beers on this show. We drink a lot of dark beers where we go, oh, it's not that dark. It's not as dark as it seems. It's not a, it's not as bold as it seems. Take that bitterness and flavor in it of an IPA, of a strong IPA. Make it a little bit warmer and less pronounced. Darker. This is where we're at. Brewed in the tradition of the 18th century English brewers who supplied the Russian court of Catherine the Great, Old Rasputin develops a cult following wherever it goes. It's a rich, intense brew with a big, complex flavors and warming finish. Pat, show him the bottle, dude. I already showed it to him. Did it's you? pretty badass. For all of you who don't know, Rasputin. Rasputin, uh... Really? Oh, yeah, I showed it to him. I'll do it if you want. Rasputin... Did you was do it a close-up one like that? Yeah. Was a character from our 10th grade uh, AP history class <laughs> character. that we all learn about. Um, he was a, a stronic. He was a person. Oh, to decline that one. That's kind of. He was a person in the Russian in the Russian field. I, I don't really know what he did. I'm. I'm he had just a fucking bloody. kick ass. Sorry, language. He had a kick Whoa. ass. Whoa! I know the f bomb too. But look at the beard. Look at the beard. It's a family sight. Kind of. It is cool though. You gotta give it to him. That's that's a beard. Oh, that's a beard. I'm sorry, mom and dad. This is one of those beers. This is instantly the minute I taste that brought me back to college. It's instantly brought me back. Waiting for that sandwich. Pepper jack, cheese, turkey, ham, all sorts of fun things. God, guys, it's a good time, dude. A lot of coffee. I'm tasting a lot of vanilla in that too. Mm -hmm. Scott does have a point though. That thing. Even though it's at nine percent, like that is a good alcohol content. Like it tastes like it's got a lot of alcohol. This could come in at like thirteen. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it's, you taste it, you smell it. Um, Look at that head, though. That thing is so chocolatey. Not yes, white. bitterness. I'm gonna go ahead and say shock and ability uh, a one. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to do it. I don't know. Ever. 
if they ever made it in the can. Could you imagine shocking 12 ounces of this? If they made it in the can and it came up in conversation, I would just kind of just kind of disappear into the background. Who's going to shock on this? I'd be like, oh, right on. All right, later. Yeah, rest people. Right with. on. Oh, is that my phone? Is that... Hello? And then it, I would leave. That's a very good point, though, because this thing would probably put you on your butt. Oh, my God. Or I'd throw it up on the floor. This really... I, uh, this was my first intro into actually high alcohol content beers because we had we had somewhat craft beers when we went to college and hung out there but this was the first like wow this beer means freaking business kind of beer yeah it's i mean <clears throat> it's, it gave a lot of space to the government warning and that you know can't take that lightly heck no especially pregnant women dude <laughs> surprised that's not their whole label uh north coast brewing co for brag for the pure sentimental value of this beer i'm gonna yeah. give this guy an eight because Rasputin, you kind of are in your Old own little Rasputin. world here. Old Rasputin, you're in your own little segment here. You're a Russian Imperial Stout, mind you. You're relatively high in alcohol content, but you're smooth to drink. Like, I'm not even worried about this. Like, it's got a lot of flavor. It's very, like, it's big. A, it's a big flavor. But... Very Andre the Giant flavor. I could drink a lot of this. It's Princess Bride in a glass. Right there. The good scenes from Princess Bride and Glass. Name uh, name an Andre the Giant line. What do you got? Anybody want a peanut? Anybody want a peanut? So you have the signs of the Lambs guy, and I have just kind of like a deep, weird, like, hey, what's up? Voice. I do. I kind of have like a Buffalo Bill Andre the Giant thing going on. <laughs> Like, like, like if Andre the Giant them. was Buffalo the Bill in Silence of the Lambs. Andre the Bill. The Buffalo the Andre. Hold on, princess. In the world. Either way, this has got a really big flavor. I'm I'm a fan of Old Recipe, and we talk about this all the time. This is literally the beer we gauge our color scale off of. Yeah, so it gets you an eight. Have to just, give it, some it gets light. an eight just for that. I mean... But Light's not going to get an eight. Because you know this is from me. Fort Bragg, California? I did. Did you hear me reading it earlier? It's good stuff, though. I was kind of reading it to myself. I don't even know if you guys heard it. Let's give a hit, let's, let's give a cheers up to California. You guys do a great job. Northern I'm California, never Southern California. You guys pull it together. Central California. You're there. <laughs> you're there. Firestone's from there. We're in it? Central California. Is the Firestone from Central Cal? That is right, actually. Paso Robles. Thank you very much, Central California. But, you know, you get, like, those northwestern, uh, like, the Portland, the Seattle. You get some really intense beers out there. You get some really intense beers from San Diego. I'm going to say this. I want to do a whole week dedicated to Portland beers because I want to see if they can hold a candle to our San Diego beers. I think they'd be up there. And I'm not even, this is never meant to be, like, a San Diego beer blog, but it's becoming a San Diego beer blog just because they're everywhere. We live in San Diego and it happens. Dominant. God, they're so good. You guys, I want to thank you for showing up again. Uh, it's, the beer's gone bad tonight. Um, it's me and Scott hanging out, drinking craft brew, getting excited about it. This is craft. We enjoy craft brew. We think you should, too. So you know what? From us to you, the beer's gone bad tonight. A lot of you, you, you. You, too. But well, the beer flows like wine. The beer flows like wine. That was my line. My bad. You guys. Thanks for checking in. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Go do yourself a favor and go buy an old recipe, and this one will actually put you down. Alright. Peace out. I like this one. That's a good one.